In addition to letting you easily add controls to a form, Visual Studio is great at letting you set the properties of those controls. In this lesson, I'll show you how you can set properties at design time. A control's properties determine its appearance and sometimes its behavior. To set a control's properties at design time, open a form in the form designer and click the control to select it. Then you can use the properties window to set its properties. By default, the properties window groups properties by category. That may make it easier to find the properties you want, at least until you get to know what properties are available. Once you're familiar with the properties, you can click the alphabetical button to list them in alphabetical order. You can type new values for many properties in the properties window. For example, if I select the text box on this form, I can type yellow into its back color property to give it a yellow background. Many properties have special editors. When you click on a property, you will usually see some sort of indicator if the property has an editor. For example, when I clicked on the back color property, a drop down arrow appeared on the right. If I click the arrow, a color selection editor appears. Here, you can pick from a list of system colors, web colors, or custom colors. Some properties are complex objects in their own right and may have their own sub-properties. One example is the font property. If you click the plus sign to the left of the property, you can expand it and see its sub-properties. You can then either enter values for the sub-properties in the Properties window, or click the ellipsis on the right to open a font selection dialog. Notice how the text box resizes itself to fit the new font. Sometimes changing a property can cause other changes that you might not expect. If you click and drag to select multiple controls, the property window only displays the properties that they all have in common. Actually, some of the properties are not allowed to be shared, so the properties window doesn't always display every common property. For example, I'll select the label and text box. The properties window now shows the font, for color, and text properties because labels and text boxes both have those properties. If I set the text property, all of the selected controls get the new value. I want to mention one final feature of properties. Sometimes, the properties window controls inherit properties from the controls that contain them. And by the way, let me point out that the form itself is a type of control. It's just sort of an extra fancy one. That means you can sometimes change a property value for every control by simply setting a form property. For example, if I select the form and set its four color property, you'll notice that the label and button inherit the new property. You'll also notice that the text box and list box did not inherit the new property. Some controls have their own ideas about what their properties should be. Note that if you set a control's property explicitly, it will no longer inherit from its container. For example, suppose I set the label control's font size to 10 point. Now I'll set the form's font size to 16. All of the other controls inherited the new size, but the label and the text box, which I had set earlier, did not. The form also resized itself to make room for the bigger controls. If you want to make the label control inherit the new size too, you can select it, right-click on the font size property, and select Reset. Now the label inherits the form's font size too. That should be enough information to get you started with properties. Spend a few minutes to create a form, add some controls, and experiment with their properties. Try changing fonts and colors, the form's border style, some controls' editable and visible properties. You may need to run the program to see the effects of some of those changes.